What's going on guys? Welcome to part one of a brand new series here on the channel where we're going to build out a blogging style application that we're going to call Thoughts. And essentially the core of this project is the fact that we are going to leverage in-app purchase subscriptions and build out a paywall. So something a lot of big popular apps have and we're going to do it end to end. So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and open up Xcode, create a brand new project, and we'll be doing some basic project setup. So we're gonna stick with the app template under iOS. I'm gonna go ahead and call our project Thoughts. And you can go ahead and make sure your language is set to Swift. We're gonna be working with UI Kit, and we're gonna be doing things programmatically. So we're gonna stick with Storyboard, no Swift UI. Let's go ahead and continue, save the project wherever you'd like. And like I said, we're going to be doing some housekeeping in today's video, part one, and that's going to include things like app icon, launch image, some of our basic file creation, so on and so forth. So let's start by running our app in a simulator, and we're going to first and foremost delete the storyboard since we're going to do everything programmatically, and we'll see how we can go ahead and accomplish that. So here is our simulator, there is our brand new blank application. Not a whole lot going on in here, but that's all right. Let's get into it. So the first thing that I'm going to do here on the settings pane is we're going to uncheck iPad and we're going to go ahead and decrease the minimum deployment target here to maybe iOS 14, 13 should be fine as well. We're also going to uncheck both of the landscape uh, orientation support boxes here. And let's see, that should be good to go in terms of the settings we'll want to change here. The one other thing that we will need to change is uh, that we're going to implement later on is by going to signing and capabilities we're going to hit plus capability and I'm going to go ahead and search for purchases specifically in app purchases and we're going to double click it to add it. We're going to be adding this later on as we progress, but let's not forget to add that first and foremost. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to right click on main.storyboard and we're just going to hit delete and we're going to hit move to trash. Now the reason we're going to do that is because when we launch into our application, we want to do everything programmatically. Now just by deleting the storyboard that's actually not enough, you also need to jump into your info P list. We're going to select this row which tells us our main storyboard file we're going to hit backspace to delete it. And we also want to go ahead and open up our application scene manifest. I will go ahead and continue to open this all the way up. And once you get to the very bottom here, you'll see that there is one more reference to main that we're going to select and hit backspace on. So cool. So now that we've done this, we need to set up our code. So our app launches to our primary controller here. So in our primary view controller for the sake of being able to visualize it, I'm gonna go ahead and set a link background color, which is a slight blue background. If you go ahead and just run your app now, you'll see that we're not gonna actually load to that blue screen. It's gonna load your app and it's gonna be basically empty. And the reason it's gonna be empty, let's see, let's give it a second here. The reason it's going to be empty is because we need to tell the app's window which view controller uh, to use as the initial launch controller. Now, the simulator is being slow, there we go. It launches here, so we don't actually have anything. So how do we fix this? We're gonna jump into our scene delegates and in this first function here for will connect to scene, we wanna go ahead and tweak some of the code. So I'm gonna delete all the comments. The first thing we're gonna do here is this guy is gonna be a window scene and we essentially want to create a new window for our application with the given window scene. So here I'm gonna say that's a window with a window scene. At the end, we're gonna say self.window is gonna be window. We're gonna say window make key and visible. And in the middle here, we're essentially going to say, what is our primary controller? Now we only have one view controller in the application at the moment, which is simply called view controller. So let's go ahead and create it. And we're gonna go ahead and say window.root view controller is VC. If we go ahead and give this a run, you'll see now when the app launches, we should be greeted with our bright blue view controller, just like that. 
so cool so now that we've got the storyboard deleted and we have also got uh, our code working here the next thing that we want to go ahead and do is start talking a little bit about our file structure on the left hand side so we're going to want to create some folders to keep our things organized as we progress so let's go ahead and create some folders for our models which is going to represent our data we're going to also create a group for our views which is pretty self-explanatory we're going to create one more folder for our controllers and what I also like to do is create a folder for other, which is everything that doesn't fall cleanly into the other folders. And finally, we're gonna have a folder for managers. So like I said, we're gonna stub out some of the files. We're not gonna to get too far into the code, but before we do that, let's at least go ahead and start dragging these files into their appropriate folders. So I'll toss app delegate and scene delegate into uh, other. I'm gonna drop the view controller into controllers. And I like to put assets uh, into uh, the uh, other folder. You can go ahead and also rename other to resources if you'd like. And I'm gonna put the launch image storyboard into the views folder. So cool, so now that we've got this done, let's talk a little bit about application uh, design architecture uh, from a visual perspective. So right now we just have this blue screen. So the way that this app is gonna work is when we launch the app, we should be greeted with a sign-in screen. Every user is gonna have to sign in or sign up for a profile. And once we're signed in, we are essentially gonna have two tabs at the bottom, one for the user's feed of posts and the other for the user's profile. We're also gonna want a way for the user to author, otherwise known as create new posts. So we've got quite a few things that we're gonna to need to get through. So let's go ahead and start creating some of these controllers and setting this stuff up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna rename this view controller to our home view controller. We're gonna to try to name things as specific as we possibly can. View controller is pretty generic. And let's go ahead and create a couple more files in here. We're gonna create some Cocoa Touch classes that are gonna be UI view controller subclasses. And the next one's gonna be profile view controller. Go ahead and create it just like that. And we're also gonna rename this file here to reflect home view controller. Now these two are gonna be used in our applications tab bar. The next thing we're gonna to want to go ahead and do is actually create a controller, which is gonna manage those tabs. And that's gonna be a UI tab bar view controller. Let's go ahead and see, there we go. UI tab bar controller. And I'm gonna go ahead and call it a tab bar view controller. Now, other than these, what else do we want? So we mentioned signing in and signing up. Of course, we're gonna want a controller for both of those respectively. So so we'll say sign in view controller. And we are also going to allow the user to create accounts because you need an account before you can sign in. So we're gonna go ahead and here, we're gonna say sign up view controller. So once we have gone and created those, let's think about what else we are gonna need. We're gonna wait, need a way for the user to read a post that someone else has posted in their blog or read their own. So we're gonna create a post view controller and maybe we'll go ahead and actually call this view post view controller so the terminology isn't misleading. And finally, I'm gonna go ahead and create one last one here in terms of controllers. And this is going to be create new post view controller and hopefully that's specific enough in terms of naming. So cool, so we've got quite a few controllers here. These are gonna be the bulk of the controllers we need. Now, what else do we need? So under managers, we're gonna to want to manage quite a few things in our application. So we're gonna have single objects that are gonna do this for us in a nice consolidated way. So the first thing which I alluded to is we're gonna have a way to uh, you know, upsell the user with a subscription in-app purchase, AKA a paywall to read more posts. So we're gonna want a in-app purchase manager. Now we're gonna be using Revenue Cat, which is this awesome service and uh, related library to manage these subscriptions. But we're gonna go ahead and do that through a single object called IAP Manager. Hence, we just created it there. Now we're also gonna be using Firebase to handle the backend. So we're gonna need a database manager, right? We're gonna save all of our posts to the cloud so we can access them elsewhere. And the database manager will do that. Next up, we're gonna want authentication baked into this application where we can allow the user to sign in and sign up. So we're gonna create a auth manager. And finally, we're also gonna allow the user to add a profile picture and upload images for their 
blog post. So we are going to go ahead and create a storage manager as well, which is going to handle storage for our application. So cool. So now that we have brought these in, what else do we need to do? Well, what we need to do is if we go ahead and try to run the app, you'll see we're going to have an error. And the reason for that is we went ahead and renamed this view controller to home view controller. But instead of actually doing home view controller, what we really want to do is we want to show the user the tab bar with the appropriate tabs uh, and the view controller. And we'll optionally show sign in or sign up if the user is you know, signed out or in a non-authenticated state. So instead of doing home view controller here, what we really want to do is do a tab bar view controller. And we're going to leave a comment here for us to update update VC to sign in view controller if not signed in. Now, since we don't have the library yet to check the user sign in states, I'm going to leave that as is, but we can certainly put together the tab bar view controller. So I'm going to come into here and what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to create a function and call it. It's going to be set up controllers and this function should be fairly self-explanatory in terms of what its purpose is going to be. We're going to create a private function in here and essentially we want two controllers. So I'm going to go ahead and say home is going to be home view controller and profile is going to be profile view controller. Respectively, we want to go ahead and add some titles. So this one here, we're going to go ahead and say home profile is going to be similarly named and it's going to be profile. And we want to go ahead and say set to view controllers and pass on our controllers here and say animated true. Now, what controllers do we want to pass in? Well, we want to actually create navigation controllers that we are going to wrap the home and profile controllers into. And the reason we're going to be doing that is because we want a nice navigation bar at the top of our UI and the navigation controllers give us a whole lot more flexibility to manage the UI. So here I'm going to say nav1 and nav2 and a couple more tiny things that I'd like to get through before we go ahead and run it. And that is on the controllers themselves, the view controllers, we're going to say a home dot, and I believe it is under the navigation uh, item, and there is a large title display mode. We're going to go ahead and say always here, and we're going to do that for the profile as well. And there's one more setting on the navigation controllers. We're going to go ahead and grab the navigation bar, and we're going to go ahead and say large prefers large title. And we're going to go ahead and assign this to true. And we'll do that for nav2 as well. So go ahead and hit command R to build and run. And when you now boot up your application, you should see a tab bar at the bottom, albeit no tab icons just quite yet. But we can go ahead and tap between these. We see we have our blue background here. And in this case, we don't really have a color. So the next thing we can actually go ahead and do is set a tab bar icon. So this is pretty simple. What we want to go ahead and do is set a icon or a tab bar item, I should say, uh, on our navigation controller. So we're going to say nav one dot tab bar item is going to be a UI tab bar item. And this gets created with a variety of different constructors. And the one that we care about has a title image and tag. So the title will be home. The image is going, we're going to be a SF symbol. We're going to use Apple's symbol library to get some pretty nice looking uh, symbols and we'll drop them in like that. So the next one that we're going to do for the profile will be person dot circle is the one I believe I'm looking for. And down here, we're going to go ahead and say profile. And don't forget this to update this to be nav2 respectively. And I'm also going to go ahead and just group these a little bit better. So I'm going to create a new folder under here. I'm going to call this core tabs. And we're going to move in home profile and the tab bar controller in here. We're going to take sign in and sign up. And I'm going to go ahead and put these in a folder as well. I will go ahead and call this off. And finally, these here, we're gonna go ahead and group them into a folder called posts. Now, one thing you might notice off the bat is I'm pretty uh, picky about organizing these into folders and it's a good rule of thumb just to keep them organized in the get-go. Otherwise your project's gonna get very messy very quickly. 
So cool. So we're going to get rid of that background color here. And actually, in fact, instead of getting rid of it, we could just go ahead and assign it to be a system background color. And similarly, we'll do that here as well in the profile view controller, just like that. All right. And maybe actually just so we can see something on the UI, I'll go ahead and add a sign out button. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, the right bar button item is going to be a UI bar button item. And we're going to go ahead and create this with a title and a style. Title is going to be sign out. Style is going to be done. Target will be self. And the action that gets called when we tap on it will be did tap sign out. So cool. So let's go ahead and create this function right down here. And when the user taps on this, we're going to ask them to confirm the sign out. We're not going to implement that in this first setup a video, but just to make sure that our views are looking good, they're showing up and being configured, we'll go ahead and add that sign in button. So, or sign out button, I should say. And the one thing I forgot to do here is you need to make sure you prefix uh, your function here at objective C since it is a selector. So go ahead and give it a run. That error should have gone away. You should have a tab bar. You should have icons in them. You should have a title at the top and you should also have a pretty sweet looking sign out button up here. So this is basically the basics of how our application is going to look. Before we wrap up, I do want to do one more thing and that is set up our app icon and launch image. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close, or I'll just minimize actually Xcode for a quick minute. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a uh, application called Asset Catalog. And there's a free version of this in the App Store and there's a couple of websites that, as well. They let you generate app icons. And I've already got the icon here that we are going to be using. It's this uh, pink you know, thought bubble looking icon. We're gonna go ahead and hit app icon here and hit create. And just like that, it should have created it on your desktop. And now what we can actually go ahead and do is maximize our uh, Xcode window here. We're gonna jump into other and assets. And what we wanna do is we wanna select app icon here and hit backspace to delete it. And I can actually go ahead and grab icon, app icon and drag it in. And that should be good just like that. The one other thing we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna take this PNG that I've got and simply drag that into Xcode as well. We're going to be using this as the launch image, uh, the splash screen. One other thing I'm going to tweak here is we're going to change the scale to be single scale, and that'll get rid of the 1x, 2x, and 3x, and it'll just use this image uh, despite the type of you know screen resolution and scale it up or down. The next thing we're going to do here is go to our launch image storyboard. We're going to go ahead and grab a image by pressing the plus at the top right there. I'll go ahead and drop it in like that. And before we add some constraints to this to pin it in the middle, let's go ahead and set an image of logo to this guy looking pretty good. And we'll go ahead and say that this is going to be pinned horizontally and vertically in a container. And we're also going to give it a fixed width and height because it's clearly way too big right now. Maybe we'll say 200 by 200. Go ahead and hit enter and boom, it should be pinned just like that. Now what I'm, I'm also going to do is put a label right below it for the app name. I think it looks particularly nice. So we're going to go ahead and caps lock and it's going to be called thoughts. And let's go ahead and uh, pin this. So how are we going to pin this? We do want to say that this will be uh, horizontally in container. We are also going to go ahead and pin this from the bottom of the image. So we're going to go ahead and hit this drop down here. We'll say maybe this is, I don't know, 30. And let's see, what else do we need? We'll go ahead and say this is 20 from the left. 20 from the right, 20 from the bottom. And actually, in fact, instead of doing the bottom, let's just set a fixed height on here of maybe a hundred and that should do it for us. Now we wanna also make sure we center align the text, otherwise it just looks a little weird. And I'm also gonna change up the font size here. So let's go ahead and change this font size. I'm gonna make it bold first and foremost. And we'll bump up the font size to be nice and large since it is in fact our application name. So cool, that's looking pretty good. Uh, maybe we wanna also go ahead and change the color here. I know I'm gonna want to, so let's go ahead and 
make it a slight pinkish color to match the actual uh, app icon. So that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and give it a build and run in our simulator. And let's see if our new app icon is showing up with the launch image. And it in fact is, and it's looking a whole lot better than our empty launch image and app icon. So that is basically it in terms of what we're gonna do in the setup. The absolute last thing we're gonna do here, I promise this is the last thing, is we're gonna open up Terminal and we're gonna CD into our project here. And we're gonna do two things in here. The first that we're gonna do is initialize Git since this project code will be open sourced. And I'll be sharing the links to that repo in the descriptions of the videos. And we're also going to initialize CocoaPods. CocoaPods is a way to bring in dependencies into your project, and we're going to be bringing in a number of dependencies. So let's go ahead and open up the pod file, and let's go ahead and stick those dependencies in here. So the dependency that come to mind, first and foremost, is Firebase. We're going to need a couple of things from Firebase, including Firebase Core, and let me just copy and paste this, and we'll tweak as needed. So let's see, we're going to need Firebase Core, we're going to need Firebase Storage, We'll need Firebase Firestore, which is the database. And we're gonna need Firebase Authentication. And I believe it's just auth and we'll, we'll see if that's correct or not. Firebase will yell at me. And the last thing we wanna bring in, which is pretty critical, is going to be the purchases SDK provided by Revenue Cat. And that is how we're gonna leverage uh, you know, in-app purchase subscription infra. So we're gonna set up everything through purchases and you guys will see how simple it is. So let's go ahead and run pod install once you've got all of those uh, added into your text file here, into your pod file specifically. And let's see how long it takes to install. Generally, it's pretty quick. Sometimes it can take a little bit with uh, Firestore in particular, but we'll see uh, You know how long it ends up taking. Looks like it's chugging along here. If it does get stuck on any of these for any reason, just be patient with it. Uh, it. It tends to finish up, you know, at the most within five or six minutes. So let's go ahead and uh, wait for this and we will be good to go. The last thing I'll also mention is once you've got these Cocoa Pods installed here, you are going to want to open the XC workspace moving forward. And actually it looks like they're all installed pretty darn quick. You can see that it's uh, just generating pods project. That's the last step. And actually, there we go. It's all good to go. If we go ahead and open up our project folder, we now have a .xc workspace. And this is the file we're going to be opening in Xcode moving forward as we iterate and build out our project. So before I leave you guys here, let me actually go ahead and run this in the simulator just to make sure I didn't break anything along the way and we'll be in good shape in the next video to set up Firebase, which is gonna serve as the backend database authentication storage for our blogging application thoughts. So bear with me here while this decides to build nice and slowly. You can go ahead and ignore these warnings on the left-hand side. We'll just go ahead and hit this little button here, which basically filters out all the warnings and only shows uh, errors that are for your build. So we shouldn't have any errors, otherwise something is broken and that's not good. The build here does take a little bit the first time after you have installed CocoaPod since we have brought in you know, a number of pretty big dependencies. So just bear with me here while this loads up. And the nice thing about doing this organization up front is it helps us partition out our workflow. So when we get into you know creating sign in, sign up, we'll know that we wanna basically mess with the auth manager as well as in the controller file, we'll need to go into auth. So that's the power of organization. Bear with me here while Xcode decides to build. After your app has built the first time here, after installing CocoaPods, it is much faster thereafter. So anyone who's, uh, who's worrying out there that these builds are gonna be super long, uh, right there with you, it's not gonna be so bad. So stick with me here and we are almost done. If you haven't done so already, drop a like down below. Good time for me to plug that. Subscribe if you're into iOS Swift and Swift UI. I want to stick around. We'll have lots more videos coming soon in this uh, series and otherwise as well. Don't hesitate to leave a comment down below if you have any questions, if you're curious what's next to come in this series, what features you'd like to see and what features we'll be covering. So we're almost there. This Xcode blue bar at the top is super misleading because 
It's almost done, but it's never done. All right, it looks like it is almost there. 2,900 tasks. It's got about 100 or two left to do, and we'll be good to go. So the other thing I actually didn't mention is in models here, we didn't create them, but we'll basically want a, you know, a user post model. We we'll want a user model, basically some objects that represent things in our application. So we're at 2,730 of 2,900. Bear with me here. The other nice thing is we've installed all of our dependencies for our project. So once this compiles, we'll be good to go thereafter for the rest of our series and we'll never have to endure such a painful build time ever again, unless I forgot to install some sort of random dependency. So let's go ahead and bear with this here. Almost done. We're at 2,800 of 2,900. All right, almost there. And feel free to, of course, forward this video as this compiles and you know takes forever. But uh, definitely want to make sure our application here is still building with our dependencies that are oh so critical. All right, we're almost there. Twenty nine oh nine of twenty nine twenty one. There we go, looks like it has finished and boom, it successfully compiled and we're good to go. We've got all of our dependencies and we'll wrap it up here and I'll see you guys in the next part. See you guys there.